from the Silicon Valley Media Office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now here's your host, Dave Vellante. Welcome everybody to this special presentation. This is Cube Conversations. We're talking about digital platforms and how IT is transforming in this digital age. Peter Cutts is here. He's the Senior Vice President of Hybrid Cloud Platforms at Dell EMC. Peter, good to see you again. Good to see you as well. So you guys got big announcement you know, coming up around sort of powering data-driven organizations. Dell EMC world, you come bringing together these two technology powerhouses. So set the table for us. What's going on in your world? A lot. So the good news is it's been it's been incredibly exciting and a lot of uh, just opportunities and things closing together. Obviously, we're now one company, Dell EMC, that makes things you know incredibly easy. And the opening up of customer bases and being able to talk about some of this transformation uh, that we're doing. The key for our organization is really to focus on delivering hybrid cloud platforms, which is really the change and shift you're seeing in IT buying and IT experience. They're really looking for that business-driven outcome. They're looking for turnkey operations. They want to spend a lot less time in actually building stuff and a lot more time in focusing on their customer, focusing on their digital transformation, focusing on getting that data-driven app out there, uh, as well as automating you know, their, their legacy infrastructure and getting it you know, quick and agile. So, those are really the, the key things that we're focused on and that's what we're, what we're talking about today. Why, what's behind some of those drivers? Are companies on, on, on offense or defense? Are they a, a, you know, fearful of getting disrupted? Are they trying to disrupt? What are you seeing in the customer? Uh, I'd say both, right? So the, the market today is about the disruptors who are actually going into the market and kind of changing the way, you know, either that uh, you, easy ones, you know, you, you call a car to go to the airport, or uh, other disruptive technologies like sensors being uh, in pretty much a refrigerator to, to track, you know, give people the ability to understand if it's full or if it's empty. Th those things are disrupting everything. And so the, the need for the business to be able to have better insight into their customer, the need for the business to be able to use IT infrastructure and capabilities and software and all these things as a turnkey offering with single call support to deliver an experience has gotten greater, and that's what we're seeing from all of our customers is they're really coming to that to that realization. Now, there are customers who are still focusing on build, and that's great, but any of those who are really want to make that shift, focus on the IT transformation, um, and focus on their customer, we're here to help. So this notion of digital transformation, in large part, you could say in full part, is all about data. If it's digital, it's, it's, it's data. What are some of the challenges that organizations face in becoming so you know so called data driven everybody talks about data is the new oil and but people are executives certainly are buying into it they see it as an imperative but they're challenged in how to get there what are some of those challenges yeah, so I mean, if you think about it, the, the chief data officer or the data scientist is really a, a kind of a new thing for some folks, but it's it's really you know kind of core to others of these disruptors business. And the reason that I think that's so important is that customers overall, and again, this has nothing to do with IT. This is just customers out in the in the landscape. They're expecting a more personalized experience. They're expecting you, you know, when you go look at your bill or when you call into a call center or when you go to purchase something in a, at a place, you're getting a personalized experience no matter what you do. And whether that's banking, whether that's manufacturing, uh, tracking IoT, whether those things are all associated, oil doing better, uh, oil and gas uh, as an industry looking at their, well, let's call it assets better and extracting more value, the end customer is really the key here. And so when you tie that all together, data-driven analysis and being able to understand you know, your customer's actions and how you can improve their experience, is a focal point, and that's where this digital transformation really, really impacts everybody. So it seems like a reasonable starting point is for customers is how, how, how can data enhance the way in which I make money? And we're talking about for-profit companies, obviously. For nonprofit, it's you know, how can I produce better outcomes, whether it's for patients or, you know, citizens, et cetera. But let's st stick with the profit example for a minute. A lot of organizations early on in this big data movement thought, okay, how can I sell my data? And that's hard, right? I was com competing with you know data sources, but increasingly companies are are learning. Well, they know how they make money. Mm -hmm. um, they're learning how data can enhance the way they make money or produce new opportunities. Um, do you see that in the customer base? And are we sort of moving now very quickly in that direction where organizations are understanding the value of their data? 
Yeah, so if you if you look at kind of our spectrum of offerings, and, and this is one of the unique things Dell EMC can actually you know, bring to the table for customers. You look at the enterprise hybrid cloud, it's all about automating your, your legacy or tra uh, traditional applications, uh, making them have their own life cycle, they're managed better, your, your database administrators don't spend a lot of time doing the, the things they used to, they spend more time focused on getting those apps more efficient and running better. Then you look at the native hybrid cloud, which is really all about pulling together that cloud native experience, get them to transform, build new applications. The kind of third pillar of that is the analytics insight module, which we're announcing obviously at Dell EMC World, uh, and really that ties it all together by allowing those kind of what I would call traditional data sources, new data sources of course in the more cloud native world, all into a single platform that allows you to ingest it, source it, put lineage on it, tie it together with security and give the data scientist a tool to take the data that you're saying that they've been collecting and, and actually pull into a source, and whether that's on public cloud or private, they can actually analyze it and provide a better experience to their customers. Now whether that's, give some examples of ones we have, um, financial institutions looking to solicit or looking to really focus offers to pull customers away from their competitors. But they're using big data to do that. They're using the analytics. They're using the capabilities of the platform. Same thing could be said for, you know, kind of some of the uh, entertainment uh, companies. We have an entertainment company that's looking at targeting off offers by geolocation, by specific uh, where they are at a, t at a time, where they've purchased in the past. Same thing could be said for a healthcare customer, which again you'll be you'll have on the cube, which is awesome. Um, you know, really looking at how they change the experience for people's healthcare. That personalized experience is what the data allows, and it's unique, and it's going to be that thing that builds that trusted relationship with a customer and an end user, as opposed to you know just trying to blanket um, offers out there or experiences for them that aren't more tailored or custom. You know, what's interesting about this discussion and others we've we've had talking about the, the Dell EMC hybrid cloud solutions is, we're not talking about hardcore infrastructure, right? We're not talking about VMs or flash storage or you know, ports, or et cetera. We're talking about organizations, analytic insights, right. you know, personas. You know, we finally at the stage, Peter, where the infrastructure is invisible as Chad Sackett's pr predicted all those years ago. Well, so I think we're not quite there uh, yet, but I would say it's it's getting close. And the one thing I would say that's still there is, you know, from a standpoint of a hybrid cloud platform, our goal is to make it invisible. Mm -hmm. But still, if you're in the build category, you're going to spend a lot of time and, and effort, and you know, you're going to build that out, and you're going to have to make all of these automation pieces, and you're going to have to pull together the toolkit to allow a data scientist to achieve the same things that they get turnkey out of a hybrid cloud platform from Dell EMC. And so I'd say that in the hybrid cloud platforms world, our goal is to actually hit that. And I think we, we are almost there uh, with across all of the spectrums, whether that's you know, P2 or traditional cloud, cloud native, and now of course analytics. This really put, closes the trifecta off. And so I think you know, uh, we'll, we'll close that gap in the next six months to a year. What are you finding in terms of, I mean, you're offering both. You want to you build it, we, we'll sell you the, the, the parts to, to do it. If, if you want to buy it as a solution, we've got that too. What's the decision point for customers? I think it, it, it depends, right? It's different for every customer. I think there's a lot of customers who uh, are still building, still have great teams that do that, and we want to support them in any way we can. I think th those customers who have maybe have that experience uh, that maybe didn't go so well or they've spent a lot of time and effort and potentially a lot of money on building something out and it hasn't necessarily reaped the rewards uh, that they've been looking for. You know, those customers are now looking for that turnkey offering, looking for that experience. And I can tell you again, with the with the combination of you know whether it's enterprise hybrid cloud, native hybrid cloud, now the analytics insight module, and of course we also have something called DHCS for the Microsoft stack. Dell EMC is one-stop shopping for turnkey offerings across all cloud spectrums, completely hybrid enabled, and it allows them that that really you know quick. Uh, time to value. Just the example I gave you on enterprise hybrid cloud about life cycling databases. Like, do you really want you know DBAs to have to be patching those things, or can you use you know an automation tool to life cycle them and, and take care of that for you? That's a simple example, but one that effectively can return a lot of time and, and value and money back to the company. So let's talk about strategy for a minute. I'm hearing choice is a fundamental part of the strategy, but specifically around cloud. What's the cloud strategy? 
So the cloud strategy is really the, the pillars that we've talked about. So focus on you know, those traditional applications, automate them, uh, make them self-service. You know, the, the real focus and what I would say for hybrid cloud platforms is the persona, that end user. We want to get the database administrator, the application owner, and basically the business, uh, business owner to be able to manage their application, steer their life cycle, and automate a significant amount of the tasks so that they, they get what they need. And that's the traditional uh, application automation that you would get out of cloud. Perfect, great. But there's those other kind of pillars that you need which actually come out of it, which is the cloud native development. You need to go create, even if you just start, customers realize they need to go create a small cloud native initiative or larger ones if you're looking at companies like GE, et cetera, um, and they need to go start and actually focus on some type of app that they want to transform into this new experience. And then you wrap that all up with the data-driven analytics insight module, and you kind of tie that all together with the data sources being not only your traditional, but also your net new and cloud native. Tie that all together into a data scientist self-service portal where the apps, uh, app dev and the data scientists can work together on changing that experience. That's really the strategy. It's to tie those things together um, take out cost in one area and automate, focus on net new development and different experience, and allow that analytics insight to be able to take action for a business owner. So it's, it's about empowering the business to be able to actually do something with that data and of course make money and engage with their customer better. The other thing that's changing in these conversations is the personas, right? You, earlier we were talking about DBAs, you know, we used to talk about and still do storage admins Absolutely. and 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 you know Unix admins, VMware admins, etc. But increasingly, we're talking about personas of data scientists, uh, data engineers, uh, business analysts, uh, you know, the data quality folks. Talk about how the persona is changing and what that means from a product and marketing standpoint. Well, I think you know th there's still, of course, you know, s storage admins, VM admins. Th those things are st are absolutely still there for customers who are or are still managing applications in, in a traditional way, and it, it's they're going to continue. The, the, it's not the majority, I would say, of of the current landscape. What you're seeing is that transition to your point of the persona and, and what they're looking to do. As an example, when you talk about a cloud administrator, a cloud administrator is really looking at you know, the infrastructure health and capacity planning and literally you know, kind of managing the workflows and automation. They're not necessarily doing any provisioning or, or, or manual operations, right? So that changes the persona of inside IT of the people who manage, right? And the operations team who keep those you know, cloud native applications running you know, those teams need to have toolkits and insights to be able to see into that. And again, we provide that. Uh, whereas in, if you're doing this kind of on your own, you've got to go build a toolkit to be able to see between the cloud native app and the actual infrastructure that it's, that it's running on. And so that sounds like a simple thing, but it's very important for people who are really trying to make this simple and get turnkey results. And so persona wise, now we're focused on the developer experience. It's seamless and they can talk to the operator. And then the last piece is to your point, Data scientists need a self-service portal. They need the ability to publish lineage, secure data, allow to share it where they need to, and have that all running on a scalable infrastructure that, uh, that they don't have to think about, right? So they don't want to think about the, the pieces below, but they want to know that it's going to be there and that they get a seamless experience. So absolutely changes the way you approach our customers and the way that we approach building platforms, right? So we used to, to your point, focus just on the CI or HCI or components we're now also able to give those turnkey experiences with all the software and components in a single solution. Well, and, and the value equation is, is shifting. Um, <clears throat> you know, John Furrier likes to say the data is the new development kit. So you've got data scientists and, and application developers now, I and mean, clearly there are different roles, but the developer is working a lot more than with, with data in a different way, thinking about business outcomes in a different way. Whereas it used to be the data warehouse was sort of the place where the insights lived for a few. Right. Eventually they'd get out to the organization. We all complain that it's too late. Now it's the business outcome that the data is, is serving. That's do, right. do you see that? Absol so absolutely confirm that, right? So it goes back to the examples I gave of customers before. They didn't come to Dell EMC and say, I, I want to go you know, to buy some infrastructure. They came to us and said, we have a data, uh, data scientist need. We want to be able to um, be more competitive and potentially take customers away from our competitive banks, what can you do to help us do that? 
analytics insight module with native hybrid cloud that allows the developers and the data scientists to work together to analyze their data and tailor offerings and be able to compete in the market, right? The same thing can be said for uh, the healthcare example where they're out there looking at how do I serve my customer better by delivering them a differentiated experience that makes them feel more connected and that we're delivering the, the right healthcare at the right time. That's a totally different starting point for the business than I need some infrastructure to run an app on. And that's, that's like game changing. That is the difference that we're seeing. And the good news is, again, Dell EMC with the portfolio we have uh, and the services and support, uh, it's, it's you know, it's a great partnership that we can build with these customers. The chief data officer role has emerged as well in this whole big data, you know, marketplace. And it obviously started out in, in regulated businesses. Many of us thought uh, that the, the chief information officer, it was his or her role to really be the data steward. In many respects, the CDO emerged because the, the CIO was sort of too busy doing other stuff, making sure the infrastructure worked, serving the business in, in other ways not necessarily in a data and, and certainly in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a governance role, but what are you seeing in terms of how CIOs are embracing or adjusting to this new reality? Well, and again, it, I, they are, and they have to. Right? Like, it's change is, is necessary for these particular um, modern cloud-native applications and approaches, right? You can't, you can't continue to do everything the same way that was done before. What I see from CIOs uh, specifically is, is a huge embrace of um, these these data scientists and the chief data officers, that role, because they work together, they can deliver business transformation. And the thing I always like to talk about when you look at any of the cloud offerings or Analytics Insight module, it's about IT literally becoming a value center, not a cost center. When you can deliver that, where the, the marketing and the sales department feels like you are transforming the way they engage with a customer. When a healthcare end user, you know, rates you really high because you're giving them a personalized experience. When, you know, in, in, the, in the oil and gas world where you're extracting more value out of one of your, your uh, assets, you know, that's like game changing, right? That, that's not just saving the company money, that's making companies, you know, significant amount of money by extracting value and delivering better experience. So that's the difference I see is they're embracing it in a big way. And again, we can help uh, those customers who want to do it very quickly. Uh, with turnkey offerings across the board. Well, I, I like to say that we're entering sort of the third wave of value creation with big data. First was like, what is Hadoop? What, how does it, can I get it to work? Again, didn't create a lot of initial business value. And then a lot of the value, as I'm sure you, you saw, came from you know, cutting my cost. I, could do, I can store a bunch of data here cheaper than I can in my, in my enterprise data warehouse. Okay, check. But that's not transformative. And now we're entering this transformative phase the digital era, how can I drive monetization strategies and, and create you know, substantially more value? And one of the other premises that we've had is that the consumers of technology, the practitioners, are going to create more value than the vendors, and that's playing out, isn't it? It is, and, and you nailed the you nailed it. It is the, that third step, or, or however you could paraphrase that. It really is that next wave uh, of what's happening is because the data that people have been keeping or corralling or or kind of leaving stagnant in different places and even just letting it sit, now they can actually use it for insights to you know look at customer trends, look at um, you know some natural resources they have that might need to analyze differently, look at um, the way they deliver an experience to to you know their their end customer change the way they market or deliver services those are all things that they can now achieve by by having the data storing the data analyzing it and and creating apps that actually provide value to not only them but to the customer so it, it's a it's the next wave and it's a huge uh, shift for customers but it's it's a powerful one and it's happening why Dell EMC I mean you know you got these two hugely successful companies, EMC, the best at storage, which was again, transforming with you know, what was then known as the Federation. You got Dell, best you know, PC company, great server company, bringing those together. You don't want to just be a great PC uh, and, and server company and a great storage company. You want to be something more. So what's, 
What's happening within Dell EMC? Why Dell EMC? Well, so there's a couple of different things. You know, when you pull together the, the EMC, legacy EMC services organization with the Dell services organization, you just get world class. So that's one thing that really helps us and again, gives us a differentiated experience. Same thing for support. When you take that support experience, uh, and it's critical, and I'll get to why it's so important with uh, the hybrid cloud platforms as you get that single uh, turnkey system with a single call support, but I think it's really starting at the main part about choice and about really combining together two uh, entities that both were missing pieces. Um, we have a lot of storage assets. We were you know, really doing well in the HCI market and the CI market. But again, I think that you know, many have said this, but having that server really be an option as part of that HCI experience you know, gives us a, a, an opportunity to offer transformative solutions and offerings and just transformative day-to-day uh, -day transactions for our customers uh, all in a single place. And specifically, if we kind of focus in on the hybrid cloud platforms, uh, we can offer, you know, any of the cloud variants, right? So we've got a, you know, whether you're focused on uh, the Microsoft flavor, VMware, uh, OpenStack, um, cloud native with Pivotal, uh, and again, the analytics insight module across the board, uh, we ha offer those all in turnkey systems uh, with single call support and full service coverage. So when you look at kind of that experience, I think Dell EMC really brings to the table uh, a complete solution. And, and you know, again, our customers' response has been very positive in, in seeing that combination. How's the integration going? Um, you know, there's not a ton of overlap. People have noted that with, yeah. between the two companies. You don't get, when you call people from Dell, you call people from EMC, they're still responsive. You don't get a lot of, well, we're bogged down in you know merger stuff. Uh, but I mean, on the outside, you know, as an insider, what's happening there with the integration? Well, I think you know the the cool part is is that it's happening very fast. Mm -hmm. And and to your point, there's not a ton of overlap where you're really you know crossing wires. It's more of you know literally they're running parallel, and it's it's how do we make sure we optimize and connect? And the great part is the culture is really aligned. And so what that's allowed is people to really kind of move together, move to the right answer, and actually move forward very quickly. And again, you know, the, the, the teams are running full force on delivering the best experience we can, and to your point, making sure our customers feel that and don't see any you know, lapse in, in coverage. So you know, that's, that's what we're hearing from our customers. Things are going well, and that's the way it feels internally. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, it points to the culture. I mean, I know EMC very well. I've watched, watched the company for decades, and it's a culture of you know accountability and, and winning. And Michael Dell obviously is a winner. So I guess yes. blending those together is a pretty powerful combination. All right, I'll give you the last word. We're we're, we're, we're going to be obviously at Dell EMC World. Um, What's the future hold? Give us the bumper sticker. The, the future is, you know, literally to take these hybrid cloud platforms uh, by storm into the market. The opportunity is great for customers to transform and we want to be, you know, there and help them as a partner because that's the real key is, you know, making our customers successful is our number one goal to your point of culture uh, for both EMC and Dell and now Dell EMC. So huge opportunity and, you know, look forward to the partnerships. Peter, thanks for coming inside theCUBE as a little preview for what's coming uh, the rest of the year. Really appreciate it. No, thank you. All right, thanks for watching everybody. This has been CUBE Conversations from headquarters at Wikibon. We'll see you next time.